It's time the gentleman from California is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself to balance my time. The gentleman is recognized. I, I would uh, at the outset like to thank Mr. Smith. I agree with probably about everything he said. Um, he has been a tremendous partner to work with. And, you know, he just had hip surgery a few weeks ago. And, and these last few weeks when all these meetings and all the time and all the, the effort he's had to uh, put forth in great pain, I, I really commend you for your integrity, for your steadfastness in, in your commitment to serving your district the members of our armed services, and this nation. It's been great experience working with you, and, I, and I've and i enjoyed just about every minute of it. There are times when we've disagreed, but we've really done that at a, at a high level and, uh, and, and tried to keep it always on the issue, never, never personal. It's been, a, been great. I want to join him in thanking our staff we get all the credit, they do all the work. Both sides of the aisle, I, frankly, most of the staff, I don't know if they're on the minority or the majority side because they work so closely together and, and we, uh, that's just the culture of this committee and, and I'm sure it will continue. As you've heard through other debate, this legislation addresses a wide variety of policy issues, including supporting operations in Afghanistan, funding the war against ISIL in Iraq and Syria, reinforcing our capabilities in the Pacific, and maintaining the nation's nuclear deterrent. But many challenges remain. Now, next year, uh, the Armed Services Committee will be in excellent hands. Mr. Thornberry and I have sat next to each other now for 20 years on the committee. He will be the chairman next year. Mr. Smith will continue to be the ranking member. They will have their work cut out for him. But they're more than up to the task. And I, and I wish them all the best because our security of our nation lies in their hands, along with all of the members of the committee and all of the members of this body. I hope sometime next year a compromise can come to the floor that will end sequestration. There isn't a magical solution that Republicans can support and the President can sign without sacrifice on both sides. When that solution comes, it will be a tough vote on both sides. I pray that our colleagues will hold this one thought in their heart when that vote comes. Remember the great sacrifice that our troops and their families and loved ones at home are making around the world. Right now, they're walking in the mountains of Afghanistan. They're at sea within missile range of Iran. They're flying wingtip to wingtip against Russia, against Russian bombers over the North Sea. They're nose to nose with the North Koreans. They're sweating in the equatorial heat of Africa, fighting a horrible disease. They're standing on the sands of Iraq, risking everything against a brutal enemy. They take those risks, they make those sacrifices because of you. They do it for you, they do it for us, for their families, for their flag, for our freedom. And how have we repaid them? with equipment that's falling apart, by laying them off while they're off in war zones, by docking their pay and their medical benefits, by throwing them out of the service and onto a broken economy. I've met our forces on the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan, dirty and sweating from fighting. I've watched too many families, as have all of you, spend long months waiting for those returning from deployment. I've seen too many heroes put into the ground. They never failed us, not once. So shame on us if we're unwilling to pay back the debt we owe them. Shame on all of us from the White House down if we cannot make far less sacrifice than we ask of them on their behalf. 
My road in Congress is coming to an end. It will be in the next Congress and the President to make these injustices right. So please, show our troops the respect they deserve. Give them the tools they need. Help keep them safe. Honor their sacrifice with your service. I know that you'll do the right thing. I'm in the twilight of a 22-year uh, career here in Congress. You know, it's been mentioned that we passed this bill 53 times. I want to tell you, I was not here for all 53 of those, nor was Adam. He's much younger than I am, and you might think that I'd been here 53. But it's been the history of the committee to get this done every year because it is so important. I've come to know many of you as friends and many of you as family. To the Armed Services Committee staff, once again, that's minority and majority. You're all veterans. You're professionals. You're tireless. But I just think of you as the best. My personal staff, do this. I did not want to give this speech. Not because I have any regrets. I just have this problem. You know, we thankfully, the speaker has it a lot worse than I do, and he gets all the attention, but I, I have the same problem. Um, you know, we, we hear a lot about government workers and, and and we spend money on government workers and they don't do anything. I just want to tell people of America that all of these people that work here spend countless hours and they do so much for so many people. I have some constituent workers at home that have helped thousands of people. And every one of these government workers here uh, deserve our gratitude, our thanks for all that they do. I want to thank all my colleagues for their many wonderful things they've said. I, I made a comment the other day that my funeral is going to be somewhat anticlimactic. I've, I've heard speeches saying what a wonderful person I am. Fortunately, I'm old enough that I don't take any of that personally or too seriously. I understand that this is a, a responsibility that was given to me by colleagues. I've enjoyed it. It's been a great experience, but I know it's not about me. It's about what we do here. I want to thank my my family, <laughs> people say, boy, we love your, your Christmas card. We have uh, six children, <laughs> 30 grandchildren, and now one great-grandchild. And they are all great. And I'm going to spend a little bit more time with them. I think I'd like to teach some of my grandchildren how to fish, if somebody will teach me how to fish. <laughs> and, and my wife has stood by my side for 52 years now, and she's... She's a tremendous person who I look up to so much. Now, uh, I'm a McKeon, so that means I'm of Irish heritage. So I'd like to part with a uh, Irish blessing for all of you. May the road rise up to meet you and the wind be ever at your back. 
May the sun shine upon your face and the rain fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. To this great body and to our troops, wherever you may be, may God bless you and keep you. May God bless America. And now for hopefully the last time, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. Balance of his time.